All right, so for today's uh, social network, we're going to talk about Google+. Uh, let's go ahead and open your web browser. And we'll go to the address plus.google.com. plus.google.com. Now, in this class, we take an overview of several networks. Here's one of them, Google Plus. Uh, so this is a this is a this is a network with hundreds of millions of users. Uh, it's been around since 2011, I believe. It is owned by Google, and the reason why it's important to us uh, is because it's owned by Google. It's tied into all of their properties. Google Plus tied into YouTube, tied into Gmail, tied into Google Search, um, tied into Google Local, Google Places. Have you ever done a search on Google and you get a, a bunch of results of businesses and some of the businesses look, uh, their listing looks uh, nicer than others? Let me show you an example here. If I do simply a search for Italian food on Google and get a bunch of results, I get results that look like classic results in that they are text results. But then I get some that look much nicer up here. They're on a map. They're on a little dot on a map. They have star ratings and pictures. I want that from my business. You probably want that because I'm going to look at th this page of results, probably ignore these plain looking links, and probably go toward these that have star ratings. These are more valuable nowadays. You've only got so much time in the, in the day to, to do things, and if you're mess uh, messing around with trying to find the perfect business this way with, is this a good business? Is that a good business? Instead of seeing, okay, this has got five stars, this has got four stars, this has got a hundred reviews, these are taking over the plain results. And the trick to get these types of results is Google+. Plus. To have a business on Google+, Plus, to have a presence like this that makes you stand out from the competition. So sometimes when I teach this class, people ask, Google+, Plus isn't that? No one uses it. I, I've never heard of it. I don't like it. Isn't it dying? Now, they've been saying that since day one, and it's true. Google Plus is not as popular as Facebook. Nothing is. Facebook is the number one network in the world. One and a half, actually 1.6 billion users now. So if you're going to compare anything to Facebook, everything's a failure. Um, but Google Plus is a great success, especially for this. Notice how Google is promoting this kind of result more than the classic result. So this is the issue with all of social media. The website is the minimal nowadays. You've also got to start incorporating social media. So I'm going to make a few notes here. I will make all of these notes available for you at the end of the day. But I'm going to say Google Plus is valuable because it's tied into Google. Well, that makes sense. The Google company has Google Search, Google Mail, uh, Google YouTube, Google Android. All of those things come from Google. So does Google Plus. So if you've got your foothold in Google Plus, it will give you preference over those that don't. So as I'm going to say, especially for local businesses, you need. Google Plus. All of these results here are of local businesses on a map. Just like if I'm on my mobile phone and I'm trying to find something locally, it doesn't matter that I get the best result in New York. It matters that I get the best result in this zip code where I'm at. And so the mobile device, which has GPS, can check all the results locally and give you the best ones. So if your business is a 4.3 rated business, 4.1, 4.3, etc. That's going to give you more of an edge over everyone else that doesn't have a rating. And we can get that the way we'll, we'll learn today. 
if you don't have a business, a local business and such, this is still valuable. If you don't have a storefront, if you ship everything out through, you know, from home in your garage and such, home business, this still works. Google Plus still works for you. It's just that it's not going to be attached to a location. Google Plus works great for local physical businesses. So that's with a street address, an actual location, or services and such. Meaning, what about if you're a plumber? You're a plumber and you don't exactly have a shop, you visit people's places, people's homes, and you fix their pipes. It works also for plumbers because you can have a listing on Google Plus. You're a plumber, people can still rate you, review you, and all of that. So with Google Plus, you can get uh, star ratings and reviews. Star ratings and reviews, that sounds a lot like what? Ratings and reviews. Yelp. It sounds a lot like Yelp, doesn't it? Well, Google is trying to take on Yelp. Yelp is the biggest uh, review site at the moment. Um, and Google said, well, we see a lot of people using Yelp. Let's try to create our own version of it. Uh, you, uh, not YouTube. Google is so big, uh, it, can, it can do that. It can try to challenge uh, Yelp and such. Same thing here, what it's trying to do with Facebook. Facebook is the largest social network, and Google try to do or is trying to do something like it, which is Google+. Google sees a lot of people spend a lot of time on Facebook all day long. They have it on all the time, or it's right in their pocket. And people spend time there, people search there, people read reviews, people find stories and links on Facebook. Google said, we need to get that traffic, so there's Google+. Plus and it has hundreds of millions of users. Not 1.6 billion users like Facebook, but hundreds of millions of users. So the first thing that we see when we go to plus.google.com is one of Google's latest, latest changes to the platform. These are known as collections. If you've been around social media a little bit, this to me seems reminiscent of something. Does it look reminiscent to you, perhaps? Pictures and squares, maybe? Instagram, or maybe Pinterest. So Google has changed things up a little bit to start to incorporate aspects of Pinterest, um, Instagram, and such. These are collections. These are sort of like folders to organize content on Google+. And so I see, yours might be different, that's okay. Mine says Munich Street Art by Robert Koch. Technology by Futuristic Tech Info. Street Art Austria by Dirk Schoenfeld. Night Moscow by Alexander Tarasenkov. So people or businesses create collections to organize concept to organize pictures, links, articles, videos. They're organized into a certain topic. All of these collections are topics, they're like folders. Anyone can create them. Notice I'm not logged in, you're probably not logged in, but as soon as I get to the Google Plus homepage, it's showing me collections. And you don't have to be a big famous user of Google Plus to be featured here. I want to be featured here. I want my stuff, my business's stuff to show up here. So if you're using collections, that could be very valuable. So we're going to say collections, which are groups of content are Google Plus's newest feature and can help you 
get attention. As we talked about last week, we created a Twitter. We used Twitter and no one knows you you exist. I created a brand new account, no one knew I existed, but we use those techniques to try to get attention. And those techniques will also work here, so I'll re reiterate them later and talk about other ones. But the social media, all of them are designed for you to use to get attention, to get people to know that your business exists, that your product exists, that your service is available. So once you get that attention in the form of followers, there's your captive audience where you can market to them. So we might as well take advantage of what Google is heavily promoting nowadays, collections. When we set this up, we'll see how, to, how it works. But keep in mind, collections are a way to get attention because I can click. So on any of these, whatever that you see, don't click follow, but click the name of the collection. I'm going to take a look at the history of Romania. If I click there, Shane Dallas has accumulated this content, which is, which is interesting to 18,000 people. 18,000.7 people have followed this collection, have seen this on Google+, like it enough to click follow. So every time Shane adds to this collection, in theory, 18,000 people could see it. I don't have to follow Shane himself. I choose to follow this collection with this content. We can do either or. We can follow Shane and all of his collections, or simply follow one or two or three or whatever of Shane's collections. Because Shane might have a, a variety of collections about um, you know, technology, architecture, politics, and I only want to follow the collection of technology. We can. Let's see something else. Um, Birds of Ethiopia, Mike Haley. This one's got 23,000 followers. So pictures of birds. People follow. When there's a new one, people see it. Let's see this one a little more, perhaps, tangibly. DIY home. Do you know what DIY means? Do it yourself. That's very popular nowadays, showing people how to do it yourself. So here, uh, Maritza uh, has 155 and a half thousand followers. She's posted 536 things to this collection. One was seven hours ago. The 10 minute DIY letter corkboard for your flair. Uh, modern hanging desk organizers. So things that that people can do. She probably, if I go to her profile, has biographical information. No, oh, let's actually do it. Let me take a quick look here on her profile. Uh, her about information. Uh, crafts blogger, obsessed with all things pretty. Come craft over with me at my website. So she created an account on Google+. She's a blogger about crafts. Um, she says, check out my website, maritzalisa.com. And she's got 155,000 followers of that collection. Her profile itself only has 1,500. And so this is to show you that Google Plus is really promoting collections. Question? Two questions. One is, does it have all the original content, or is it stuff that you can copy and, you know, make a post? You know, these are all her original designs? Well, that's two answers there. The big thing is, as much as possible, try to put in your own content instead of other people's content, because you're just promoting them if you use their content. So as much as possible, try to use your own original content. As for what she is posting, I'd have to kind of look around to see what it is, but I'm seeing a link, awesome.com, decor8blog.com, curbly.com. Looks like she is sharing a variety of things that are hers and other people's. So that's a valuable thing there, a viable thing to do. Share other people's stuff, although keep in mind that you're giving them free advertising. It is building a collection of 155,000 people so that when she posts her own stuff here, people might see it. 
Gmail address attached to a Google business, like if you have your work email funnel through a Gmail account, mm -hmm. can you create a Google Plus account? Yes, you can, you can use uh, any Gmail. I think you could even use non-Gmail addresses. And you can attach multiple Google Plus accounts to one email. So we'll see how to do that later because in my example, I have this Gmail address and I set, I, I've set up Google Pluses for about seven different businesses. So one Gmail can control many Google Pluses. So we might have touched on it slightly last time, but we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more again also. About as much as possible, use your own original content. One possible rule of thumb is the 80-20 rule, which is 80% your own original content, and then 20% repurposed. Someone else's content. You can, of course, change these ratios however you want. It could be 90% your own stuff and 10% someone else's. So you have a lot of leeway. Yes? So say you have a general um, collection that you call dogs or something like that. Mm -hmm. Can a bunch of other people post that because they also want to create a collection? No. Collections, collections are solitary. I create a collection, only I can post to it. Many okay. people can look at it and subscribe to it, but only you can post to it. Later on, we'll talk about communities, which is then the way for many people to join together and collaborate. Uh, so with Maritza, she's posting all of this content. Um, here's, a, here's one from her own. Maritza.com, I see there, uh, for leather DIYs to try. So she is sprinkling her own stuff in there with other people's stuff. The point of that is, she says on her bio, maybe she's cool enough that I would then want to follow her, uh, uh, her collection or her account, and I can see her latest things. And she's using Google Plus, again, as I recommend, which is a marketing tool. She's sharing, sharing this stuff, she's getting followers, and she says, come craft with me over at my website. Most likely, if we visit her website, she's got um, content there, maybe ads. That's how you make money online often with ads. Let's take a quick look. So it mostly seems to be her own stuff. Blog, link, contact. Um, oh yeah, I do see ads there on the side. So that's how a lot of people make money off of the blog. I want to write about something It's very interesting to me, and I want to then get a little bit of money off of that. So by adding uh, ads to your blog, you could, you could profit from that. You, she's doing something she likes, and therefore when someone comes to read her articles, she then uh, it's showing off other things like uh, grow your blog's traffic, infinite growth. Yeah, I do need to increase my Pinterest traffic. Let me click that. And if I click on that, she gets a little bit of money off of that. And so She's just a, a random person that I chose on Google+, Plus. although what she's doing is what I recommend. She's doing what I recommend, which is that you create collections, you put out content, and then uh, you build an audience. You can create as many collections as you want. You can make them public or private and uh, it's a way to help you get uh, followers. And as we saw, as we talked about previously, followers are your uh, captive audience where you can market to them. From here we can't see... Well, I think we can actually. Let's try this. Um, on the Google Plus homepage here, at the top you've got search. Click the search box there and search for a keyword about your business. 
So let's say my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to search for a keyword about that business. So that's going to be cooking. To cooking, ignore any suggestions, just type your keyword or phrase and press enter. Google Plus then shows me collections with the keyword, communities, people in pages, and posts. So this is doing a search in Google Plus, content in Google Plus, like we saw last week with Twitter. In Twitter, we did a search, we saw content, we saw who to follow and connect with. Same thing here. So if you're creating content on Google+, and you're writing descriptions and keywords and such, and someone searches, they could find your content. And so I can go look at all these collections with that keyword, cooking. I could get found here because this changes as more content is added. Um, let's take a quick look at communities. I go to more. Look at all these cooking communities. Families cooking with kids, cooking, cooking and baking, recipes, cooking and food communities. We'll go into the nuances of communities later, but the secret here is that communities are where members can congregate. People that have a Google Plus account can then join a community. And a community is like the classic message board, where people congregate there on a topic, share photos, links, video, ads, whatever, and people can see it. Here, up to 233,000 people can see what I post, if I post there. If I go to this one, 37,000 people can see my content. And if you click any one of these, not, not the Join button yet, but if you click the thumbnail or the name of the community, you'll see what's in it. Um, articles and links, different people posting original and repurposed content, links back to their website, to their blogs, because really social media most of the time you're not going to leave it as a dead end. You're going to set it up as, as a funnel to take you somewhere, which means great looking photo, I want to make this myself, I click here and that link goes back to their website. It's not a dead end that it's just, here's the picture. It's a link, it's some sort of teaser, and then a link back to your website. So this applies in Google Plus and all the networks. Usually, add a link to your homepage to drive traffic <coughs> back to it. Because you can show off your DIY tutorials on Google Plus, you can have a complete uh, recipe there, you can show pictures of your products on Google+, etc. But if you're trying to sell anything, if you're trying to get phone calls to build leads and such, you can't do that really directly through the social networks. You can't really sell anything directly via tweet on Twitter. You can't really sell from Google+. You can't really sell on Instagram. It's taking them back to your website, your home page, where you've got your shopping cart and your products and your uh, contact information and all of that. So that's where you complete your <coughs> ultimate conversion. Now, I apologize. I usually teach more than one class. They kind of run together sometimes. Have I talked about in this class about conversions? No. Okay. Conversions. There's these keywords. Impressions. Conversions. Impressions are simply views. And conversions could be clicks. Or better yet, actions. I have 15,000 followers. Great, those are impressions. But how many of them actually clicked on anything to buy, or to subscribe, or to read my blog? Those are the conversions, because you've converted them from a non-reader, non-subscriber, non-buyer, to a buyer, to a reader, to a subscriber. You've converted them. Conversions.
impressions, conversions. So that's on your home, on your website where you'll complete the ultimate conversion, since you can have many of them. I can have a conversion. I can have a goal, which is simply more followers on Google+. I can have a conversion, which is more clicks to my website. I can have a conversion of reading my blog. My ultimate conversion, however, might be selling that product, getting that donation. Usually conversions, the ultimate conversion is a monetary one. I made that sale. I uh, got another subscription. I got that donation. Although it doesn't always have to be monetary, it's just you have to decide what your ultimate conversion is. I'm going to back up. So I saw results for cooking under collections, communities, people, and pages. So these are some entities on Google Plus that have these keywords. So there's a cooking channel, there's cooking lights, cooking with dog, cooking ideas. People or businesses can create a Google Plus page, like Twitter. And so if you are cookinglight.com, let's say, you have content, something to entice people. There's no need for turning on the oven to enjoy this strawberry pie. So I see this no-bake pie. Looks great. I want to make it. Click the link. It goes back to their website, where then maybe they can buy something, or click an ad, or subscribe. And then finally, there's posts. So any posts that had the keyword uh, that you used, it may or may not be on topic, such as, can you smell what Dwayne The Rock Johnson is cooking on a new YouTube channel? So this may or may not be about actual cooking, but it had the keyword cooking. Do you have to insert your own link into it, or does it do it automatically if you add it back to the website? You do have to add it yourself. It doesn't add it. It doesn't add it automatically. Pretty much just Pinterest does that automatically. All right, so uh, we're going to create an account together, learn the nuances of it, and then start to use it to get followers uh, for conversions and such. But any, any other questions so far? Okay, so I'll make a note here. Google Plus differentiates, differentiates, differentiates between personal profiles and business pages. Google, uh, Twitter doesn't, but Google Plus does. When we created the Twitter account last week, we just said sign up. We created a business, we have a business. Here, there's a little bit of a process, because if you try to create an account, the default will be, here's your personal profile. We don't want that. We want a business page. Because technically, Google, Plus, Google wants you to use Google Plus the right way, the way they define, which is that people use a profile, businesses use a page. You may say, well, that's dumb, I'll do it my way. Okay, maybe, but then it might get shut down because you're going against the rules. And we use all of this stuff under the terms of service of the systems. And you want a page anyway because a page is going to give you more features than a personal one. So if you already think that you've created a page for your business on Google Plus before this class, you might have done it wrong. You might have created a personal profile for your business, not a paid business page. You can change it. You can convert it into the right one. Um, what we're going to do together is we're going to create a brand new business page, like Twitter. We created one last week. We 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 did it uh, as a testing page, which you can then delete if you'd like. Same thing here. I'm going to recommend for us to create a brand new page. If you've already got one, you can use it but I'm going to recommend to create one, and then we'll delete it later, if you'd like. 
and I'll say you can use multiple, you can manage multiple pages with one email. So your Gmail address or whatever, uh, we can use that one to create and manage multiple businesses. You can add multiple managers to pages. So there's other people in my business that I also want to be able to log into the business page and post something or delete someone's mean comment or you know engage in in building more followers. I can have more than one manager. So wherever you're at, let's um, if you see on the side left menu, you should see join Google Plus. Go ahead and click there. One account, all of Google. So if you already got a Gmail address, we can use it. If it's personal or business, we can use it. Or you can take a moment to create one. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you can do that if you'd like. If you need to create a brand new Gmail account, go ahead and do so on your own. But uh, it's always a little bit of a, of a stumbling block when we create these things because people are at different levels. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to suggest either create create a Gmail or just log in. Uh, you either need an existing Gmail or to create one but I'm going to log in with an existing one and then I'm going to show you we need to then create a business page. So it's a little confusing. It is going to be the same Gmail for the personal and the business. So just take a moment to sign in and I'll show you what that looks like when we've signed in. So at this point, you should log in, and wherever you're at, then we will then orient you to what we need to do. But is anyone having any trouble logging in or creating the account? Can you go to make your personal page versus business page? Well, that's what I'm going to explain in just a moment. So as, as long as you've signed in, then then we can go on. Question? Yeah, once I verification, once Google have a robot and do that, I want to use my cell phone. Since my cell phone's off, ironic, isn't it? Hmm. Well, um, maybe temporarily you can turn it on just to uh, get that uh, verification, or just follow along for the moment because Google is trying to prevent spam, trying to prevent spam accounts. Just like last week, uh, a lot of us were trying to create a Twitter account, it didn't let us, it locked us out. So the same thing might be happening here. So if you're able to verify, you, you should. But if not, you can just follow along for the moment, and then we can deal with it later. So I've logged in with my email address. It is my personal one. I could have logged in with a business one. But here's how you tell what, um, what you've got to work with. I've logged in, and because I've set this up before, my photo is at the top right. Your photo may or may not be there. It may simply be initials. But if you click the icon at the top right corner, mine says Google Plus Profile. And over here, it says Google Plus Page, Google Plus Page. So on this account of mine that I've already set up before, I've got my personal account, which then I use to manage multiple accounts for businesses. As I said, not only do I teach this, but I'm part of a company that we do this for clients. 
And so usually it falls on me in the business that I go in and create a Google Plus page for the business and then I give managerial access to other people. And so we'll talk about all of that very soon, of course. But the big idea is we need to right away go off and create a business page, not use the personal one. We want to create a business page. The way we would do that is after we've logged in, we'll go up to the address business.google.com. We'll go to business.google.com. In my case, because I've already set this up, yours may look different, and again, uh, we'll all be on the same track in just a moment, but mine looks like this in that it shows a tab of locations and brand pages. And then it shows these different businesses that have a Google Plus page. These are brand pages. These are companies that don't have a physical location. Then I've got a few under locations, a few businesses here that do have a physical location. So I can create and manage as many of either of these that I want. I'm showing you here. Here's some businesses that they have a location that I can manage, and here are some businesses that have, you know, a service or whatever that doesn't that don't have a location. You may not see this. You may see right away a map of the US because it wants you to create a page. So if you've got a business with a physical location, you can go through that process. Let me show you what I mean here. Uh, let's see. We change this all the time. There we go. you might see something that looks like this, a map that says Google My Business, Find Your Business. So if you've got a location, what you want to do here is uh, claim your business. But remember, what we're doing in class, I try to teach this as a sort of a test. I, I really don't recommend everything that we're doing apply it to your business right now. I recommend learn this, and then once you're comfortable with it, apply it to your real business. I don't want you to mess anything up of your business. So instead of going through the process to claim your actual business here, I'm going to recommend for everyone to create a brand page, which is a business page on Google Plus that, doesn't, that is not attached to a location. I don't want you to claim your business on this page that you may delete later. So I'm going to recommend for us to create a brand page, which is a locationless business. And the way we do that is wherever you're at, most likely you should have the three menu, the three-line menu at the top left, click on that. Mine says all locations, add location, all brand pages, add brand pages. Do you guys see that? No. Who said no? All right, so at, the, uh, at this menu item here, uh, we have the place for me to view all of the Google Plus business, businesses that I've created that have a location, or add a new one. I can then deal with 
all the brand pages that I've created without a location or add a new one. And then also here, contact. Contact support. Now don't click on this. You can do this later, but contact support is the system that you can go here to get an actual person to talk to to fix this. And I have worked with them. I have clicked there to get a phone call. They call you. And they, and they have called me and we figured out a problem that I wasn't able to figure out about a business. We did, I did this with a, a business owner a few months ago, like at 11 p.m. Clicked on that, we got it all worked out. He had multiple business pages, we had to merge it, there was no easy way to do it. We called him up, they did it. So there is a real person you can deal with in Google+. That's under the contact support. For us, I'm suggesting that we're going to add a brand page, so go ahead and click on that. Create your Google Plus page, page name, website, and type of business, similar to what we will see when we talk about Facebook. But under page name, so I'm going to do Victor's Bakery, you can do whatever you want, real or fake business. This can be changed. This is not the address to your Google Plus. This is simply your name on Google Plus. If someone searches, they could find you. Then we've got a website. This is your company's website, so you should put in right the address to your website. This is going to lead them back to your website. There's that conversion that you can accomplish. And then you've got type. Not a lot to choose from, but we've got product, entertainment, community, other. None of them is the wrong answer. Not a lot to choose from, so I've got a bakery. In your opinion, which of these would work if you're a bakery? Maybe product or brand, maybe other. Uh, I'll just use product. There's the terms of service. Again, everything that we create on these networks is ours, but we're transmitting it through their networks, and therefore that there's some liabilities there, and there's that page terms really is for them to cover themselves with liabilities. Uh, they're going to say things like, you agree to not use your Google+, Plus, like for hate speech and for promoting violence and all of that stuff. So you should read that uh, to see the full scope of what you can use Google Plus for. But usually it's for, it's not a big deal, uh, and you have to agree to it if you're going to use it. So I'm going to turn the check mark on and click Create Page. There's going to be a little bit of a tour that we'll look at briefly. Uh, once we set this up, this is Google My Business. Uh, I kind of notice that they're, that they're a bit schizophrenic in that they call it Google My Business here, they call it, they call it Google Local there, they call it Google Plus here. It's basically all one thing with this account that has all these features because it says build your brand presence on Google search and Google Plus, grow and engage your audience, understand how customers find your brand. These are some of the benefits of having the Google Plus page as opposed to the profile. Because if it's a personal profile, a person cannot leave star ratings on a person. A person cannot then see their customer results about traffic and such. So that's why you need the business one. Yes. What's that? Yes, there's only so much I can do. So if it can let you verify it or not, uh, you should try to verify it. And if it doesn't work, uh, ladies, do you have a question back there? You're being a little distracting. Lady in yellow, ma'am, miss, girl, you too. Excuse me. You're being a little loud there. I'm talking to you guys. You're being a little distracting there. So um, 
here I'm going to click get started and it's going to say a few things about be found by your customers um, this is the biographical information of your business the keywords the description all of this good stuff we'll fill that in in just a moment next Google is full of a lot of services and we can go between them all with those three dots there. We can go to Google Plus, we can go to YouTube, Gmail, it's all found there under the apps. We've got uh, switch profiles. This is what I showed a moment ago. When I logged in it had my picture because it's my personal account but I can switch between my personal and my businesses just by clicking on the icon at the top. So here I've signed in. I've got a business page. And one of the things I should do, just like with Twitter, just like all the networks, I should um, fill in as much of information as possible. Now one thing that's always been an impediment well, in the last few months, is because Google has changed things, changed the interface, changed the design. And some of you might have the old design, some of you might have the new design. So if anywhere there it says, try the new Google, I would click on it. If you see it in the corner or in the center of the screen, I would click on that to go to the new design instead of using the old one, which they will delete at some point. You can tell it's the new design because the top bar is going to be a big flat color, whereas the old design I think has like more of a shading and gradients and such. The new design also has the three-line menu instead of a, a different uh, kind of menu. But on this screen, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click Edit. And again, I usually when I teach this class, it's always a little bit off for a lot of people. Don't hesitate to raise your hand and, and I'll help you out because, like right here, it's telling me, join the new Google+. Plus. So if you've got the old version, your screen's going to look different, of course. And if yours looks very different, look for the button that says, go to the new Google+. Plus. Or if not, raise your hand and I'll help you out. So I'm going to say here, I'll say, yes, let's go. I want to use the new Google+. Plus. So it's, the new Google is going to have the flat design. We will have an arrow at the top left. If you click on that, it takes it back here, and this is Google+, Plus, the modern Google+. Plus. You might see back to classic, or if you've got the classic one, it might say go to the new one. So just to confirm, is everyone here at this point? Does everyone see this sort of menu on the side like this? Anyone need any help? All right, so the anatomy of, of Google+, Plus, we, ne we need to know a little bit about how to get around. But all the networks have the same sort of um, elements in that, let me write down right here, they call them different things, but here's some commonalities, common features of social networks. Some sort of home or timeline screen, which shows your content and that of who you follow. So if you follow accounts on Google Plus or on Twitter or on Pinterest, Facebook, whatever, you're going to have some sort of timeline, home screen, whatever the terminology is of, of that network. In Google Plus, it's home. 
the home button takes you to the home screen where you see whatever you've posted and the content of those that you have followed. You're going to have some sort of notifications screen. Gives you updates. Did you get a new follower? Did you get a reply? Uh, did you get a, a share or a retweet? It's got different names, but this is where it's going to tell you some activity has happened. Gives you updates, shows you your activity, who's followed you, all of that good stuff to keep up to date. And oftentimes there's also a profile. Your um, home page on the network. So your address. The, the address of your account on Google Plus or your Twitter or your Facebook, your profile. Now I did say the term here profile even though I've been saying page is for business. There's a lot of confusion with this term. Some networks call it profile, some pages, some accounts, and so forth. That's why I'm saying it's the home page of your network with your address. On Google Plus I see home, I see profile. If you click on profile, that's what your business looks like on Google Plus. Very basic, and that's your address at the moment. Everyone that creates a Google Plus by default gets an address with just a lot of gibberish. But eventually, you will be able to claim a, a short name, a vanity address. I want to have google.com slash Victor's Bakery. Because eventually you'll be able to have, like my company here, google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. Eventually you will be able to have a short name just like that. But every company that starts off on Google Plus has just numbers. Gibberish. Those numbers are legitimate. This is a legitimate link. You can share that via email, text message, whatever. That is a link to your address, to, to your profile on Google+. It's obviously not memorable, doesn't roll off the tongue, uh, but that's you. Eventually, you'll be able to get that short name. I have to look up what the latest requirements are, but I believe you need to use Google+, for at least two weeks. You need to have it fully set up. You need to use it legitimately because Google Plus doesn't want to give out an address to any fake spammer. They want people that really care and want to use Google Plus, they want those people to have a nice, short, memorable name. So I'll say here, we start off with a gibberish URL address. Eventually, you will be allowed to choose a short custom URL. You'll know it when it happens because when you log into Google+, Plus, you'll get a bar at the top that says, click here to claim your custom URL. So if you've already used Google+, Plus for a bit and you're, and you're logging into it again, you might see it there to say, claim your name. But since we just created an account, um, it's not going to let you yet, probably. So at some point you want to go through the process of editing the profile. I'm not really going to look at it. It's the same sort of concept as Twitter last week. You need to fill in a biography, you need to put in your address, you need to put in some graphics, so just, just so that you're not uh, another generic, multicolored account just like everyone else, every other spammer. So in my notes I say we, everyone's got a home, everyone's got a profile, everyone's got notifications. I don't see notifications here because it is, it is this bell at the top right corner. Like on Twitter, 
there was a bell that gave you notifications when you got a follower, when you got a reply, etc. Google Plus puts it on the top right corner, and a little number will appear there. If you've got a 2 there, that means two things happened. You've got a 12, 12 things happened, you're popular. It'll list here. You got a new follower, you got a reply, etc. I don't have anything going on here, so it just says you're all caught up. You have also previously read, so as you as you read these and they get cleared out, you can always go back and look at previous ones by following the link there. Those are the three... well, it's also going to depend on the network. Let me mention one more. You often then also have this could be separate or it could be mixed into another screen. We'll just call it the uh, followers screen lists who you're connected with. Some screen, most likely on the network, is going to show you who have you followed, who has followed you, how to unfollow, how to block people, all of that stuff. Google Plus calls it the people screen. These are the people that have connected with you or that you have connected with. If we take a look at people, you have three tabs at the top. Find, following, followers. So following and followers is like Twitter basically in that uh, I have a Twitter account, someone finds me on Twitter, they click follow, I have a follower. I have someone that's paying attention to me on Twitter. I have followers here on Google+. I'm on Twitter, and I want to follow other accounts, other businesses, to see what they're doing, to keep up to date with trends and such. I'm following them. I can do the same thing here. Here's a list of all the accounts on Google+, that I'm following. Following followers. And on Google+, Plus, like Twitter, it will suggest to you, why not follow this account or that account? And it gets smarter about that the more you use it. The more you post things, the more you log in, if you connect an address book and all of that, it'll say, why not connect with these people? That might be valuable. Potential customers. If you look at the following screen, thing that's different on Google Plus than the other networks is that with Google Plus you can organize who you are following into circles, into groups, into folders, circles. So let's say I've followed 10, uh, 10 people on, on Google Plus. So I'm, I'm Victor's Bakery. I go in and I search and I follow 10 people that seem to be interested in baked goods. And so, by default, when I follow them, they might be added to the customers circle. Uh, let's say I also follow other important people in the world of baking. So I put them into the VIP circle. Let's say I follow other team members, other employees, I put them in team members. The point of the circles is, we'll see later, that when we actually post something on, Twi on Google+, we can target our post to a specific circle, more than one circle if we want. So in here, what I could do is I can create a circle for uh, vegans and a circle for you know gluten-friendly people. So when I post something and I'm going to share this vegan-friendly cupcake, I can target that post to the people that would care about it most. Maybe I put people into a chocolate circle, and all the people that love chocolate, I share that to them. I can put people into a strawberry circle. Everyone that loves strawberry, I can share directly to them. Because if I've only got these basic circles, like customers, everyone is going to see what I share without any differentiation. Question? You know, if I've got the same person in two or three circles, and I, I 
share posts to those three circles? Do they see it three times or just do they know that? It knows. They will, the person will not see it three times. They will only see it one time. And on that note, we can put people into multiple circles. I have a chocolate circle, strawberry circle, so I'm going to put one person in both of them. Multiple ones. So we'll say circles are organizing your followings, who you are following. Circles of organizing who you are following. You can put a person or business into multiple circles. Use circles to target your content to specific audiences. This is one of the things I really like about Google+. Plus. Um, you, instead of having the shotgun approach that you hit everyone, you're going to use the sniper rifle approach that you're going to... bad metaphors. You're going to use the approach that you're going to target specific people in specific circles. Um, and you may be happy to know uh, people don't know the name of the circle you put them in. If you want to organize people, um, all they will do is get the notification. Victor's Bakery circled you. They won't know that. Victor's Bakery put you into the annoying people circle. So however you set yourself up, they're not going to know how you've organized them, just that you've connected. So I don't have anything really here to to do here. I don't have any people to organize yet. And I don't have any followers. I just created this account. I don't have anyone here yet. Briefly looking at collections. Again, this is the same screen where I can look at uh, content here. I see trees and forests. I see my country, Pakistan. I see monochrome. So later on, we'll talk about creating collections to put the content that we want to share so that people can find it easier. So we won't deal with collections just yet. And then communities are similar to that, except that this is more where more people can contribute. Where a collection, I create a collection, I share to it, and everyone can see it and enjoy it and comment and such, but they cannot add something new to the collection. We will see with communities that I can join a community and so can a thousand other people, and everyone can share to that community. We'll see the pros and cons of communities later. Let's go back to the home screen. We'll do one thing here and then we'll take a break. But notice every time we go from screen to screen, the top bar changes color. This is another indicator that you're on the new Google Plus. So if you don't see that, uh, look for the button somewhere that says let's go or get Google, get the new Google Plus, just so that we're all looking at the same thing. And when I go back to the uh, Google Plus home page, here this is, I haven't followed anyone, but Google Plus wants to show you content that might be interesting to you so that you connect and you, and you follow. So you can ignore this for the moment, because what I want to do is, before the break, at the top, I'm on the home screen, and at the top it says, what's new with you? And I've also got a pencil on the bottom right corner. Those are two ways to share something. Usually when you're somewhere, you're either going to see the pencil or if you scroll away from, from what's new with you, this is something to share. Let's give this a try. If you click what's new with you, it pops open to let you share, just like Twitter. Text, content, links, pictures, videos, etc., locations. This one doesn't have polls, like Twitter does. But here, I'm about to share something. And I can attach photos. This one's different than, uh, than Twitter in that there's no limit to what you can write. 
So you don't have the 140 character limit. I would not suggest, however, to write a whole essay here. People are probably not going to read it. Notice there's this chunk of information here, which is a pretty good amount. And at a certain point anyway, Google is going to cut you off unless people want to read more. So you can write a whole bunch of stuff, but it's going to get cut off at a certain point. I'm not exactly sure how far, you know, 200 words or whatever, but eventually it's going to cut off. So whatever we write here, we want to think what's the most, uh, what kind of content can I write here before it gets cut off? And I guess a rule of thumb is if you go past a screen full here, you know, as you're writing all of that, eventually that's going to get cut off. So if you stick within the first screen full or so, that should be visible. And this is the same thing with Twitter in that I can write something. Hello, everyone. Happy to be on Google Plus. And again, like Twitter, think about what are you going to write to entice people to reply, to share, which is what's called on Google Plus a retweet, to favorite it or like it, or to follow you. What are you going to do to entice people to some action, into a conversion. Because you'll get impressions, you'll have people see this, but how do you get conversions? How do you get a reply, a retweet, a, re uh, a like, a um, follow, a click? It's still going to be up to you about what to write. But let's say what I want to do here is, I'm going to write something introductory, and then I'll write circle us for the latest in yummy treats. What's your favorite cookie? I'm writing something. Right now I have zero followers, so no one's going to see it, but if someone saw it, perhaps someone is going to answer. That's again part of the dialogue of social media asking questions, doing follow-up, keep the ball rolling, it could lead to results, it could lead to conversions. So if I include some kind of question in my posts, that could make people apt to answer. So that's like Twitter, except I don't have a limit, and notice I'm putting some paragraphs and a little bit of design, organization. What we can do on Google Plus that we can't do on the other networks is do a little bit of text styling. We can do bold, we can do italics, we can't do that easily on Twitter and Facebook and such, but we can do that on Google Plus. Let me show you how to add bold or italics. There's also a third option. And the way you do this is you mark the words that you want to change, but it, it doesn't work how you think. Let me show you first and then we'll see what I mean. If I do this, asterisks, that will be bold. If I do underscores, that will be italics. That is, if I start writing the asterisk and then finish writing the asterisk, everything in between, once I click post, will become bold. You won't see it until you post. Using asterisks, which is Shift-8 on the keyboard, Asterisks will give you bold text. If you wrap underscores around one word or one sentence or one paragraph, I suppose, it'll become italicized. So all of that, once I post, will become italicized. So the point of knowing this is that then, for example, I've posted this, and it's going to look like plain text, just like everyone else's text. But if I judiciously use bold or italics, 
the point of bold and italics is emphasis, to stand out. So if I judiciously use those, when people are scrolling through, something bold will pop out. Something italicized could be noticed. I'm not saying, of course, make everything bold. Don't start bold here and end bold down here. When everything is bold, nothing stands out. When all your, th when all your text is italicized, nothing stands out. So don't overdo it. In my case, what I would do is make the question here. What's your favorite cookie? Make that bold. Make that stand out. They're going to start to read my content, and then bold is going to jump out right away. And they can see that question and answer it. Maybe for fun, for emphasis, I'll put underscores here. Yummy treats will be italicized. Let me show you what that looks like. I will post it. I share it to all my zero followers or anyone that stumbles onto Google Plus. Italicized. Bold. And yes, in theory, I could do italicized and bold at the same time, but that's overkill. One or the other. It's like when people put four exclamation points on something, one is enough. Either italics, either uh, bold is enough. That's just a personal design thing. I do have a degree in graphic design, so I think I know what I'm talking about. But here, you can judiciously create visual interest with a little bit of bold or italics. If I go back to post something again, notice there's a little camera, which is the same as, as if I had clicked to share something and clicked the camera. I can add photos. I can add multiple photos. I can add more than four because there's no restriction about the length of your message. Like Twitter, I can add a whole album of 20 photos and people could see them all. Too many photos, I think, is overwhelming. People will lose interest. In my opinion and from what I've seen, I will say if you share photos, well, before that, let's say, just to write it over here, asterisks are bold, underscores are italics, and there's one more, which is dashes is strike through. That one's not used that often you can check it out if you'd like. I, I might not add it myself, but strike through is literally that your words have a line dashed through them, a strike through. You often find that like in a contract. You had a contract, this new part of the contract supersedes an old part, so you cross out the old part. I don't I don't I have very little use for that in the real world, but if you need it, we have strike through. It's a couple of dashes. I'll say use these judiciously. Can you do a hyperlink instead of putting like a YouTube post in there so you're seeing all of the YouTube? Can you hyperlink that into the text? No, the closest is that if you add, I suppose the fourth one is if you add an actual address, so victory.com slash blog. That will become an active link, although it'll try to create a little preview, like you might be seeing. So you can't exactly, um, depending how you do it, uh, add just a hyperlink. If you add the address, it'll make it an active link. You can't start it in separate. But if there's a way to add the video to the post. Right, the video shows, but it also shows all of the Yeah, so Facebook, you can add the link and then take away the link and just leave the video. But here, you have to leave the link and the video or the link to the website. So it's a little more cumbersome. But you can add web addresses also. In what way? Well, when I post to Google+, mm -hmm. um, there's a little, the little icons at the bottom. And so when you, when you click on the one for the video, it 
Not that one. Yes. The camera. Go. Oh. No, that's for photo. You might have the old Google Plus. Yeah, I still like it better, but eventually they're going to take it away. Huh. Because then the, the URL doesn't come in the photos. It, it, goes, it just shows the video. Yeah, the old version has a couple different things that I like a little bit better. Um, and here's the new one where they're kind of mixing together to select. If you use the link here, you can attach a video also, not just a, a link. But it is different than the old way. So I was going to say, if you share photos, try to use less than 10. You can attach 20, 50 if you like. But at a certain point, it's like the classic, everyone got bored of watching all of those family photos from that trip. You took an amazing trip, you took all those great photos, you want to share all 100 of them, but maybe after 17 of them, people get the idea. So, same thing here, uh, I would put in, I usually don't put more than five, um, although some studies that I read show adding more than one photo does uh, make people look at your stuff more, but there is diminishing returns at some point, you won't know what's effective for you until you do it, like Twitter, you won't know if your video posts are effective or your text posts until you do it and check your analytics. We have analytics, we have statistics on Google Plus as well, we'll look at later. So we want to try different things to see what happens. So I would say share some photos, that's useful. And then we've also got link. If you attach a link, so I'm going to get, for example, here's an address. Uh, so let's say I have an address for my blog. If I add a link, what it'll do is it'll go to the website and generate a thumbnail and possibly get a little bit of a text description and such. And so it'll show that in addition to whatever you want to write here. So it's attaching a link. And um, if you have other pictures on the page, you can click that little swap icon and it should jump through your different pictures that it sees. <clears throat> you can cancel it, of course. So if you got some link from your website, you can copy and paste it into the share box here, and it'll create a little thumbnail and you can further comment on it. So let's say this was for my business. Um, let's see, uh, have you ever uh, been to Comic-Con? We sell a filling and nutritious energy bar. That's just what you need. And I can attach another link here. There's one box for the link. If you use that box, it'll create a nice thumbnail for you. But if, if you still want to add more links, you can. VictorsBakery.com, shop, energy bar. After I publish it, after I post it, that will become an active link as well. It won't have a thumbnail. That's reserved for the link. And then you can only have one at a time share that, people will see this and that link. They can share a location. This works best if you're sharing from a mobile device because then it can tap into GPS to find your location on Google Plus. And let's say I'm saying that this is I'm at the Hilton, 
and I'm typing we're having a special uh, charity bake sale. Come on down. Notice I can still attach a picture and a link to this one as well as location. So the point of this is that if I've attached a location, someone then on their mobile device that sees that, that follows me and sees there's a location, I can tap and see a map and get driving directions. Obviously this doesn't apply for everyone, but if it makes sense for you, that's something that you can do. Let's say I share that. So I've been sharing some content, and this is adhering to what I had said previously on Twitter about do you want to try to get followers first, or do you want to post content to no one first? And I suggested post content to no one first, because then you have something to show for it when someone wants to follow you. So again, I'm going to post three to five to ten different things before I try to get followers. I've got three things so far. And I can do them all at once. I can spread them out on different days. doesn't matter. But I want content first before trying to get followers. We'll talk about getting followers after the break. But it'll be similar to what we talked about on Twitter. Before that, one difference that we have uh, another difference that we have on Google Plus as opposed to Twitter is that we can go back and further edit our posts if we make mistakes. Like, whoops, I saw I made a mistake there. I, I misspelled come down, come on down. I want to fix that. If I had tweeted this, I, there's no way to fix it. I have to delete the tweet and tweet it again correctly. With Google Plus, I can go back and edit what I've written to fix it. There are limitations, however, of what I can fix. And the way you would fix it is, notice that everything posted on Google Plus has a timestamp in the corner. This says, I, I posted it a second ago, this one was someone else's 47 minutes ago, etc. If you click the timestamp of any post, it pops up to kind of show it to you in more detail. And then you've got three dots on the top right corner, the menu here delete my post, edit it, other options. Uh, so if I go to edit post, I can go back here and further add to it, fix it. But notice I cannot do anything about the location. The location has been set. So if I added location and I added it wrong, I have to delete it and do it again. I've been using Google Plus for a while, since the beginning, 2011. Uh, this new version, there's differences that I don't like. One of the things that's different is it's not so obvious sometimes what you need to do because what I've done here is I've edited my post. Great, I'm done. Now, now what do I do? You have to remember to press the back arrow at the top left. You were looking at this post. You're done with the post. There's nothing else is done. But there's this back button that takes me back to my previous screen, not the web browser back, but back inside of Google+, Plus, which takes me back to all of the posts again, back to the home screen. So that's kind of weird and different. But if you click on anyone's post to get away from it, yours or someone else's, you have to press the back button. So I'm looking at something, I'm done with it, I click back. Another way, which again, some things that are, that are not intuitive. There's the time that you can click on for you to focus on the post. Non-intuitively, you can click on the blank area of the, of the post to get that same sort of menu. And if you click outside of it, kind of to deselect, same thing. So that's another way. If you click on the blank area, from here you can also get this menu. There's no obvious button there. I noticed that you have to do the map really. Do you 
want to do the math and do it first. Why is it that way? Why can't you do the math? For whatever reason, the way they programmed it, I think they made a little bit of a mistake there. Uh, so, good catch there. You have to add a map, then add a link, because if you do it the other way, there's no more spot to add the map. Same thing with, let's say I want to add a picture, I've added a picture, and then a location, it may not work, so add the map, then add the picture. So we've talked about a few different things. Let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about um, collections and communities and other nuances and getting followers and such. Uh, it's, it's 7.35. We'll take a break until 8.35. I'm sorry. 7.35. 7.35 to 7.45. And then we'll go on.